You got to hand it to the globalists, though. Like all master criminals, they are incredibly bold. They have a lot of panache, a lot of flair. They are outlandish. Imagine, we already have the most open borders in the world, the most open welfare for immigrants in the world. It's only Western Europe and the United States that do this. Totally wide open. If you can get here, free health care, pay for your baby, massive welfare. And see, these Latin American immigrants on average have been perfect because they are hardworking on average and have a lot of ingenuity and are smart. But then they'll also work the system and go get on welfare at the same time as a supplemental under multiple uh, identities. But forget that now. This isn't like, uh, you know, you know, like 30, 40 years ago having having migrants that went back and forth to do the you know hard work out in California where you didn't have a big uh, farming population. This is the collapse of Latin America that is in total shambles right now in the global depression in an agreed deal with Guatemala, Mexico, and the U.S. to bring in unlimited illegals who have diseases, who have huge criminal records, who have mental issues, who are handicapped, who are totally ready to fall in as Democratic Party voters. And then Melissa Harris-Perry gets up and says, you are racist, like the Klan, if you aren't for totally open borders. I, I mean, that is just wild. It'd be one thing if they said anybody can come here but no welfare. That would still be pretty wild. But I'd be, yeah, okay, fine. Because, you, you know, we, we've killed 50-something million of our babies. We do need to replace the population. But no, 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 no. If you took all the middle-class people out of Latin America, there's not many down there, it would collapse. In fact, some of the middle class down there is better than our middle class because you got to work really hard and know what you're doing to survive in these kleptocracies. If the, if the middle class of Latin America wanted to come up here, great. In fact, I know a lot of rich and middle class Mexicans that have fled up here, and they'll stop me downtown going, Mr. Jones, you don't know how deadly Mexico is. I had to leave. They used to kidnap people, and they took over my restaurant, or they took over my factory, or they killed my wife. I mean, everywhere I go. I was in a restaurant once, and the owner was Mexican from Mexico. He turned was like some famous boxer. He runs over, he's like 70 years old, something like Ricardo Montalban. He's like, Mr. Jones, you have no idea how bad it is. You're absolutely right. It's collapsing, blah, 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 blah. Wait till the average yuppie finds out how bad this is. I want to go back to William Gein of AliPack.com, A-L-I-Pack.com. There is a strategy, like with Canner and others to destroy them that's why the because they're destroying us that's why the republican leadership with the big uh, classic republican donors have lined up with the democrats to double down money against tea party people at the city county state federal level because they can see the numbers that that people understand what's happening and let's just be honest here there's probably 20 percent of the republican party that doesn't like seeing a bunch of brown people run around uh and and doing it because of racism but I know, Mr. Gein, I know myself, this is about survival, okay? Latin American countries hate each other, folks, and have riots over soccer games. You cannot bring in masses of people from collapsed countries like this and not have a total meltdown. So you got a bunch of racists on the Hispanic side, a bunch of racists on the white side. This isn't about that. I'm not dumb enough to care about the color of somebody's skin. I care about the content of their minds. And the Democrats want these people here, pure and simple, to turn the whole country blue. And the Republican traitors are working with them. You've got the floor, sir, to break it down. William Gein, the head of AlleyPack.com. Well, what's happening right now, Alex, we believe is more than just campaigns and protests. We believe that there's a new movement rising rapidly in America that's beyond the men, man, beyond the Tea Party, and, and it seems to be involving a lot of different groups and, and other types, different types of Americans that weren't working together before, combined with people who are starting to abandon Obama and the Democrats, including uh, blacks, Hispanics, uh, white liberals in cities. Everyone's waking up to Obama as he tries to run across the field with this. So we have a movement that's building, and we have some very, very encouraging uh, information of things that just happened. You know, just last weekend, we held over 300 protests across this country on July 18th and 19th. Some were small as five or 10 people on an overpass. Some of them had 100 people, but they were in 300 locations against illegal immigration, against immigration reform amnesty legislation, and against the current Obama-inspired uh, border surge that we're enduring at our borders right now. And we did these, and then there was one other, it was an interesting story because it just broke out of Boston, um, 
we had gotten a note from some people in Boston around a radio show personality that wanted to do one as part of our national protest, but they wanted to do it a week later. And we were like, well, okay, but, you know, we're trying to get everybody to do it at the same time. So we did ours. We uh, broke through the, the mainstream media. We generated hundreds of local television, local newspaper, local radio broadcasts that were devoid of the usual racism calls and, and negative type of bias that we encounter from the mainstream national media. We bypassed them. We broke through that. Then a week later, this past Saturday, July 26, truly historic date, Boston, Massachusetts, over 500 American paid five excuse me, 5,000 American patriots gathered in Boston following a radio show host named Jeff Cooner who did one of these protests. But of course, the Boston Globe takes little bitty uh, up close pictures of the crowd, claims that only hundreds were there, and as a disinformation campaign worthy of a psychological operation conducted by a military against uh, another nation, they pumped this out on social media saying, look, Boston. And we were excited because, hey, you know, a couple hundred people, that was great. About an hour and a half later, this past Saturday night, the pictures start coming in. There are clearly thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in a liberal bastion like Boston that are chanting, send them back, send them back in USA. So we have a movement here that we have to, we have to nurture and we have to build it up. Uh, it starts this Saturday in three states, Tennessee, Washington State, and Michigan. We have protests that are on the front page at alipac.us, A-L-I-P-A-C.us, and our email alerts uh, we'll also keep you up to date. We're on Facebook under Americans for Legal Immigration, but remember that Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg and Obama territory. Everything you say there is completely recorded and monitored, and you can't trust them to let us get to you when you need you, when we need to. So we start on the second. We've got a few more targeted protests, but then we're going to have them all over the country in different places, culminating in a new, hopefully larger national wave. We want at least 500 protests across the country right before the general elections on Friday, October 24th, and Saturday, October 25th. We want it to be undeniable. We, if we want it to be so powerful that it doesn't matter what the media does, that they see these protests all across the nation. And Alex, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but there's something I hope you'll consider. I hope that you'll ask your staff to start putting our updates on your website about this, this thing and consider leading a protest yourself because the indication from what happened in Boston is that if you or other talk radio show uh, personalities out there that are monitoring this situation, if you go to the ground now, if you reinforce one of these local protests, if you show up as a speaker and talk about it on your show, instead of a few hundred people, we end up with thousands. And while some radio show hosts may say, well, you know, I just report and I don't really get too involved with the politics of it, maybe so. This is the make or break point for the United States of America. This is where the country is teetering between destruction and possible salvation. It's going to be decided between this very day today and November 4th, 2014, because we have a chance to throw out more. You know, the, the, the goal is to throw Lamar Alexander out on August 7th. And after that, the goal is to wipe out politically every single Democrat running from dog catcher up to U.S. Senate we can. The party of Obama has to fall so hard that our political revolution must be stronger than the, the revolution of 2010, stronger than the revolution of 94. And I believe that all of the stars are aligned for us to do that if the proper activists, citizen support, and leaders will step forth at this time. Well, I'll say this. I've always tried to be nonpartisan, and I've kept Republicans and Democrats at arm's length. I'm a libertarian constitutionalist, so I get attacked more by the Democrats traditionally because they're basically communist uh, at the grassroots level. Above them are these globalists that you know are managing any, any dumbed-down population they can control. But the Democrats, under Obama the last seven years, are going for the juggler, shutting down our coal power plants that are totally clean. And they even have mainstream articles today about how it's making the earth dirtier because Mexico and China and India have no controls and it's all just going there. Energy prices doubling for electricity roughly has made what companies were here leave. I mean, folks, I, I say that every day because shutting down our power plants, I mean, I mean, that's an act of war. That's an act of embargoing the nation, devaluing our dollar, funding Al-Qaeda, starting wars with Russia, I mean, I, I, it's just over the top how la-la land nuts it is. And, and I want to believe that the globalists through Obama at least have some plan. But when I really pull back from it, they're destroying their own empire. And it really comes down to the fact that the Democratic Party 
really does hate individual wealth and the middle class. And I've got an article here where uh, today, I was going to get to it in a minute when I dig it out, where all the majority of billionaires are supporting open borders because they really do want to destroy the middle class and be the only ones with money because the only thing that threatens a big globalist is the middle class that's got a million bucks or a half million dollars saved because we might want to be free uh, or, or, or somebody who's going to retire with a million dollars or two million dollars. They want us out of the way, just like in the third world, they want people poor. And it fundamentally, at Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Zuckerberg with his pump and dump, it makes me angry at them, uh, William, that, that, they're, that they really, I realize that the Democratic Party is like Ted Bundy psychopaths at the highest levels. They, they didn't used to be this bad, in my view. So I'm forced to totally throw my weight behind the Tea Party and, and, and proto-conservatives because, not that they're even perfect, but because the Democrats are the equivalent of metastasized cancer. Well, Alex, once again, this what's happening now is beyond... It's beyond the Tea Party because I think a lot of people are starting to understand that what we have here is a constitutional crisis. When the borders are being destroyed and our existing laws are not being enforced and the President of the United States is so far outside of his constitutional abilities, including